future course I'm teaching is called Conservation. And what it focuses on is conservation of wild spaces, wild animals, wild plants, and the complex politics of actually accomplishing that goal. Conservation is an umbrella term that includes preservation, which suggests that there are natural areas that are valuable and worth protecting, but that humans can also use those areas in a carefully considered way without threatening the species, the habitats, the environments that are contained in them. This is a course that will appeal to a broad spectrum of students. It's going to look at different ways that environmental managers use spatial science not only to create the parks and the wildlife corridors and the buffer zones and the protected areas and the forest reserves, but also to track wild animals as they move across those spaces. Protected areas are no longer enough. The vast majority of what now goes on under the rubric of conservation or preservation actually happens beyond protected area borders in spaces where humans live. And that's, that's a fundamental shift in thinking about conservation that poses special challenges. It actually asks people to look into their own backyards. And in New Jersey, their backyards might have black bears in them. And there's a huge debate about what to do with the black bear population in this state. That speaks directly to a whole range of questions that we're going to be talking about in this signature course focused on conservation. And what do we do? Do we call them? That is, do we shoot a bunch of them to try and manage the populations? Do we try and educate the humans about how to coexist with the bear population? Do we pick up the bears and move them someplace else? This is the sort of thing that really hits home and can hit home in a very literal sense for students wherever they live. Given a lot of my own interest, my own research background, I mean, I spent about eight years living on the continent of Africa. So students in this course are going to get a heavy dose of Africa. But we'll move around the world. There are conservation issues that I think are very pressing. Commodity exchange networks into which a lot of these animals are fed a lot of these wildlife products are fed, are global in nature. I think one of the most gripping issues, actually, that surfaces in a course devoted to conservation is the issue of poaching. There are gangs of poachers who are hunting rhinos and elephants using submachine guns, extracting the ivory or extracting the rhino tusk and leaving the rest of the carcass to rot. Those same poachers and their benefactors are also engaged in the illegal drug trade. They're also engaged in selling illegal gemstones. They're engaged in a whole range of uh, illegal commodity exchanges that are global in nature. What this does to our own thinking about what constitutes a wild species in the first place, how we think about nature, all of that inflects how we go on to manage it. But there's a whole other class of poachers who are simply interested in hunting to feed their families. They're technically poachers because they're illegal. They're crossing a park boundary and they're shooting an antelope to eat it. There are also people who are hunting or, or who are shooting animals because they're trying to protect their crops. They're shooting animals because they're trying to protect their families. And yet they're automatically branded poachers and they're shot or sexually harassed, or robbed. It seems to me that the moral calculus we would use to evaluate what those people are doing is different in fundamental ways. A focus on conservation is really, ultimately, about the exercise of power. And whose responsibility is it to actually implement conservation? Is it the national government's responsibility? Is it the World Wildlife Foundation's is it your responsibility? Is it my responsibility? So what is the role of science? What is the role of politics? What is the role of economics in doing conservation? Students who take this course are going to learn about how the world works. They're going to learn about economics, basic philosophical questions. You can find a topic in just about any newspaper you'll pick up today that's relevant to this course on conservation. But we can't understand these contemporary dynamics 
without first understanding the history of what's gone into making those spaces, without understanding all of that complexity, we can't come to grips with figuring out a way to address these problems today.